We're back. I'm talking to Bernard Whitman, who's been on the show a few times, and he's a Democratic strategist, so he's flying high. He's you've got to be long his stock, which means keep it, don't sell it, because uh, Obama seems to be doing very well. You would concur, I think, right? I would absolutely concur. With a 67 percent approval rating and a 73 percent favorable rating, given the fact that Americans are tremendously dissatisfied with the state of the country, he is in very good shape. So what do we have to talk about? We should go home. Everything is done. <laughs> Obama's doing great. Let me tell you this. I saw Timothy Geithner the other night on television, and I've been a little bit cool to him on the show, but I think he was excellent. He did the Charlie Rose show, and uh, I thought he was excellent. And I think that they really have a plan to move this economy out of uh, the, 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 the hole that it's in right now. And my own impression is that I think by the fourth quarter, things are going to get better in this country. Um, this is a prediction that I have. I'm not giving an example of one or two, but I think they've got a handle on it. I know a little bit about economics, and I, I was very impressed by him. And uh, I was not in the beginning. He sort of learned how to communicate. Somebody's been teaching him how to communicate. He's a key guy in Obama's uh, business today, that's for sure. But my audience is very interested in the state of Israel. You are very interested in the state of Israel. Absolutely. So Joe Biden, who was at APAC, I guess, which is the big conference of the American-Israel Pact, uh, said that there has to be a two-state solution, which everybody agrees upon. Uh, so does Arak Sharon in his uh, you know, last days. But Netanyahu has not said that yet. So the feeling in this country, if you talk to very right-wing Jewish people, is that they feel there'll be pressure put on uh, Israel to move forward with a Palestinian state when there's really no one to talk to. So give me your wisdom. Well, I, I think that the only solution is a two-state solution. And the fact that Netanyahu won uh, that election probably slows that process down somewhat, but this is an inevitability. And so we are sort of managing towards the inevitable. And obviously this is slowed both by Netanyahu's uh, ascendancy, but also the absence of a real center of leadership, to your point, on the other side with whom to negotiate. So I, I think that going forward in re for this area of the world a relatively short amount of time, we will see arising a two-state solution, but I think it's going to be still several years in the offing. No, I, obviously everybody agrees that there'll be a two-state solution, but, you know, he's got Avigador Lieberman in his uh, party, uh, and he's got 15 seats there. Lieberman is a secular guy. He might agree to it also, but the question really is whether Bibi can hold this coalition together and accept it verbally right now. I'm not sure. Now Blair hit him, and this is the most uh, this is the toughest point in any negotiation is Jerusalem. Believe me, I've been through it. I know it inside out. That is the one issue that nobody in Israel really wants to tackle. Barack tried to do it when he met with Arafat under Clinton. But it is the thorniest issue that has to be resolved. And Blair came out today and, and, and said to uh, Netanyahu, we need to put that on the agenda. That's a huge move, huge. I don't know where Obama is on, on the issue of Jerusalem. You know, they always come out with these promises that it is the eternal capital of Israel. He said that in a debate, and then the next day he revoked his... his, <laughs> his remember that? Yeah, because it's, it is. It's the third rail in American politics with respect to, to Israel. So, all right. So you're a Democratic consultant. What are you doing now, day to day, really? What do you do? Uh, we're involved in a number of races um, here in the city and around the state and around the country. And we also spend a lot of our time taking the political model and applying it to corporate America because, you know, in a political campaign, you focus your resources on persuadable voters, the swing vote. And so we're doing the same thing in corporate America by identifying the swing customer so that we can yeah. increase the return on investment because so much of advertising spending in corporate America is wasted and they would do well by applying the political model in, in consumer marketing. All right. You think Arlen Specht is a hero? <clears throat> uh, <laughs> I, I think, I think Arlen Specht is an opportunist, wow. uh, but a good one. 
Um, I think uh, I think Arlen Specter recognized two things. One was he was going to lose an election. He was going to lose an election. <laughs> And two, he recognized the obvious, which is... Maybe his rent was high in Washington and the, he didn't want to go home, or low in Washington. You know, the, <coughs> the Republican, to paraphrase Ronald Reagan, I thought he did this quite well. The Republican Party left Arlen Specter. He didn't leave the Republican Party. The Republican Party has drifted so much over the last five to ten years, and they're doing themselves a tremendous disservice because what is happening increasingly is if you are deemed not far enough to the right on fiscal policy or not far enough to the right on social party policy, the Republicans will run someone against you in a primary. So Pat Toomey almost beat him last time, would certainly have beat him this time. In fact, I'm very upset to see that today Tom Ridge is not going to get into that race because I actually think Tom Ridge could have given Toomey a run for his money and ultimately a Ridge Specter race would have been a fascinating duel. Ridge is a in Republican. Ridge is a Republican, former governor, right. and uh, former man. Secretary of Homeland Security. So you want him in that race? He just announced today that he's not going to. If I were, uh, certainly... Is he going to be challenged, uh, Specter, in a Democratic uh, primary? He is. There's some it, congressman, right? Uh, if, if I were advising a Democrat, I would probably not... Uh, challenge Arlen Specter, given the fact that Obama. Obama has said not only that he would support him, he'd campaign for him and he'd help him raise money. So and there are a number of good candidates that, that may have emerged from that race, including I had uh, a great candidate that I was prepared to run against in the Democratic primary and had a great shot of winning, but uh, alas, uh, Arlen took care of that race. <laughs> Who uh, who made the deal there? Biden? This has been something that's been you know talked about for years. Really? And Biden has been, I think, had no less than a dozen uh, conversations with the guy. Uh, the over biggest the lie in Washington is when everybody says, "My good friend." There's no such thing as my. Well, good in friend. the Senate, though, I think in the Senate, I think there really is, and I think. Bernie, that I worked in the Senate. <laughs> they don't have good friends. I can tell you that. The most they have is the Yankee bean soup in the Senate. Then they go down there and they, they pal out. I worked there for five years. I was a consultant to the Veteran Affairs Committee under Senator Vance Hartke. They are, everybody's my good friend. The, my hand goes out, my good friend. They're not good friends. These guys are operating self-operators. Uh, Harry Reid's a little bit nervous now, too, isn't he? Is he going to stay majority uh, uh, whip or whatever he does there, Senate majority leader? Uh, I, I would be more than happy to have a change in leadership there. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Uh, I think that in the Democratic Party, we probably could find a stronger leader than Harry Reid. And what about Nancy Pelosi? Pelosi? Um, I, I think, uh, look, I, I don't get me wrong, I think that Harry Reid has served the party very well. I think Nancy Pelosi has served the party They're very well. They're friends of yours. Um, ha having said that, I think we also have uh, other generations of leadership that are going to be ready to step up in the not-too-distant future.